Alright, so to all of my subscribers, I know that recently I haven't been that active on my channel, and the main reason for that is because I'm currently in the actual moving process. I know I've been talking about moving for a while now, but now I'm actually moving. So if I don't upload for a few days, just keep in mind that I am moving to a new city, so that's going to take up a lot of time. But for the rest of you, just sit back and enjoy the video. So we have reached the halfway point for E3. Now that EA, Microsoft, and Bethesda has gone, now at this point, all we have left is really just Sony and Nintendo. And I guess Ubisoft, but as I'm recording this, Ubisoft's already gone. So I just, I want to get this done before these conferences come out. But as I said in the beginning, I was moving, so I couldn't livestream the events. However, on my Twitter, I did talk about the events live, so if you want to see that, then feel free to just go check out my Twitter. However, today I'm going to be doing something a bit different. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be looking at the three conferences that have already happened, not counting Ubisoft and all the Square Enix. Just going to be talking about EA, Microsoft, and Bethesda, and I want to talk about my personal thoughts on them. Now, I will make a video talking about E3 and just giving it a general grade at the end and see who won once E3 has officially come and gone. However, I just I feel like I this is something that I want to talk about because but a lot of the companies had really interesting announcements. But without further ado, let's get into the first conference, which was EA. Alright, so I'm gonna be honest. I was not really that into EA. I've never really been extremely into the company in general. However, I did want to see what EA would announce. And being honest, what they showed off was meh. So some of the more smaller games that EA announced, like Unravel 2 and Sea of Solitude, look actually pretty good. I think that Sea of Solitude looks like a game that I might try. It really just depends on what platforms it's coming out and I guess it's price tag. But I really feel like Unravel 2 really caught me off guard and that's a game that I really want to try. I haven't tried the first Unravel, but I feel like that's a game that, you know, now that it's you know, Unravel 2, you can play with two players now. I think that'd be a fun experience to have with a friend. Don't know what to say about Sea of Solitude. It looks alright. I think it's pro it probably would be fun. Like I said, it's, it just depends on the platforms and the games or the price that it's gonna have. But as for the rest of the games, I don't really know how to feel. So, Battlefield 5 looks actually... F oh, it looks fine, being honest. It looks... Like, visually, it looks okay. Um, I think that the game would probably play like Battlefield 1, maybe just with some new, you know, vehicles and weapons, but being honest, the whole World War II style isn't as incredibly appealing as I first thought it would be, but the, probably the worst part about this entire conference was just Battle Royale mode in Battlefield 5, which makes no sense to me. Besides that, I really don't know how to feel about the EA conference. I'm I've never been into sports games, and the only game that I would really that I would want to try, um, if EA actually announced it, would be something like Skate 4 because I've heard really good things about Skate 3. That's fun to play, especially with friends because it's just like you you can just go into like really high parts of maps and just jump off. I've always found that really fun, and if EA showed off Skate 4, then I probably would probably maybe pick that up. But as of right now, I don't really know if EA really hit it out of the park. I think that they didn't. And being honest, I really didn't just... I didn't feel that great after watching the EA conference. I'd probably give it maybe a C uh, if I were to rate it. But it's just... It was meh, being honest. Alright, so the next conference was Microsoft. And this was... Probably the show that I was looking forward to, well, not the most, but one of the most. And that was because I was expecting some big announcements. And the reason for that was because Microsoft has been saying that they are going to try and learn from their mistakes and actually make exclusives this time. And after watching the Microsoft conference live, I have to say that they did show off a lot of exclusives, mainly Halo Infinite. That looks like something that I, obviously people who haven't tried a Halo game probably aren't going to care too much about, but if you have tried a Halo and you like it, then you're probably going to be really into Halo Infinite like myself. But being honest, Halo Infinite probably isn't going to be a massive system seller to people who already don't own an Xbox One just because there's not really much that's probably going to appeal to them. At least that's what I think. I mean, if there was something in Halo that does appeal to them, then they probably would have already gotten an Xbox, but I don't know. Gears 5 looks good. I do think that 
Gears 5 is probably going to be a game that I'll find pretty interesting. I have, I don't know what Gears game I played. I forget what it's called. All I remember is that it came packaged with my Xbox One, and I thought it was pretty good. I did have it recorded in some of my older Vizilla Productions videos, so maybe if I go back and find it. I just, I don't remember which one it was. Other smaller games look pretty good. Like, I don't remember what it's called, but there's a game that was showed off that I really liked. I know a lot of people also liked it. And it's basically like a Legend of Zelda style game with like a fox. And you probably, if you watched the entire conference, you know what game I'm talking about. I just, I can't remember what it's called. Please just let me know in the comments. That game looked really fun. Crackdown 3 was delayed again. And I mean, that was probably one of the more negative parts of the conference. But you know what? I just, with what also was revealed, I think that for 2019, Crackdown 3 is probably going to be almost like buried under it it's just in my opinion i think that all of your stuff is just going to topple all over crank uh crackdown because crackdown 3 has been in production for at least what i think six years i heard so yeah i would really appreciate it if crackdown 3 came out this year but i guess you gotta do what you gotta do ori and the will of the wisps looks pretty good i think that the graphics have definitely been updated compared to the first one and i am a fan of the first ori i haven't finished it yet but mainly it's just because I haven't really had the time to. But still, Ori and the Will of the Wisps looks pretty fun. But mainly the visuals really, really appeal to me. I love how the game looks. Devil May Cry 5 was a thing. I've never really been into Devil May Cry. But I'm sure a lot of people will probably be excited for that. And of course, you got stuff like Cyberpunk 2077, which looks pretty good. I don't know if I'll get it because I've never tried a Cyberpunk, but... Still, it looks decent. Well, not decent. I, I would say that for a lot of people, it's probably going to be their cup of tea. I just, I don't know if it would be something that I would like. And that was really it for the Microsoft presentation that really spoke to me. Well, I mean, there was some art things that they talked about. Actually, probably the biggest thing they haven't mentioned yet is that Microsoft said they're working on a new console, the next Xbox. And that really felt weird to hear because... The Xbox One X isn't even a year old. Now, we know that consoles usually get developed way before, you know, they actually come out. But it just, I have a feeling that this new Xbox is going to come out just too early. Like, early to the point that people who bought an Xbox One X are going to feel cheated. As as in, like, you know, why would I, why did I get this? You know, I, if I just waited a bit, then I could have gotten the brand new Xbox with all these new games. But... I don't really know how it's going to play out. I don't know when the new Xbox is going to come out. I would say maybe 2021. Maybe 2020 seems a bit early, considering that, you know, the Xbox One X came out literally last year. But still, the Microsoft conference was really good. It was definitely an improvement over last year's. And even last year's was pretty good. So I would say this is one of the better conferences. At least for now. We have no idea what's going to happen in the future. Nintendo may just steal the show. Or Sony. You never know. The final conference I want to talk about is Bethesda. And I, th I don't know how to describe Bethesda. So I know that a lot of people are probably not going to agree with me. This part is really, really opinionated. But I am a huge Bethesda fan. Bethesda is probably, I've said this before, they're probably my favorite publisher ever. Like for gaming, they're my favorite because... They have experiences that they've made that I really, really like. And I know a lot of people can agree with me on that. So, when this conference came along, I think that Bethesda hit it out of the park. And like I said, you may feel differently. I know in the Nintendo Prime stream, there was a lot of people giving like a 5 out of 10. And I, 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 that's their opinion and I'm fine with that. But I would give that like, their conference in general, like... An 8 out of 10. It was incredible what they did at the end. So I haven't tried Wolfenstein. I haven't tried Doom. I've been trying to get around to trying Doom. But it's never really been something that I've really just had on top of my list. However, I am interested in Fallout 76. This was the game that Bethesda revealed a few weeks ago. And I'm hyped for it. And it's... I've never really tried a Fallout game. But... Fallout 76 looks like a game that's gonna really capture my attention as in like when when that game comes out on in November 14th I'm pretty sure it is I'm gonna probably be buying the collector's edition. I'm so excited for that So I know a lot of people feel yeah about Fallout 76 being online Especially Arlo plays on Twitter if you don't know 
he basically it just he he wasn't too thrilled about Fallout 76 being online, but still, you know what? Whatever. I'm fine with other people's opinions. And if you don't like the game, even though that there is kind of solo mode, that's fine because Fallout 4 and other Fallout games exist. However, I really like the fact that it's online, but I also like the fact that you can play it single player kind of ish. Because I want, I've all, me and my friends wanted to play, well, me and my friend who loves Fallout, I, he, I got New Vegas on a Steam sale, and he, we were trying to find a way to play it online, and I have been, we've been looking for that game that's like Fallout that's online, and now that 76 is online, I think we're gonna be playing that a lot. Then came Starfield, and Starfield looks pretty fun, but does, like, I like the idea of, of, like, an RPG in space made by the same people who made Skyrim and Fallout 4, but they didn't really reveal much, so we can't really grade it now. Starfield could be the next big thing, but I just, I have no idea. And then, of course, came Elder Scrolls 6, and that was really when the, com the conference just cut off, because that was the moment where everyone had, everyone just been asking for Elder Scrolls 6 for a long time, and I know I've been part of that. And if you know something, Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim is probably my favorite RPG I've played, like in my life. So, when Elder Scrolls 6 was announced, I got a little bit hyped, like just a little bit. Now obviously some people were expecting that because Bethesda had to show that off to, you know, get people to stop mentioning it, and that was something that they actually did talk about, how, hey, you keep mentioning this, so you know what, we're going to show off Elder Scrolls V. So, I think if we didn't just spam Bethesda with messages on Twitter saying, hey, where's Elder Scrolls VI, I mean to say, then they probably wouldn't have showed that off. But still, from what I can see from the opening trailer for Elder Scrolls VI, it kind of looks like the map is going to be significantly bigger than Skyrim, but I have no idea. And there was other stuff also in the Bethesda conference. I really liked Skyrim Very Special Edition. I think that was a great video. But being honest, I think that Bethesda really nailed it out of the park at the end. At the beginning thing at the well at the beginning it was a bit rough with, you know, Rage 2 having that really corny intro. But still, you know what? Bethesda, I think they did a good job this year. Significantly better than last year. I know a lot of people can probably agree with that. But anyways, those are just my thoughts, and if you have your own thoughts on E3, then please let me know in the comments. And also, I will be doing a full recap once E3 officially ends. And if you want to check out my social medias, I'll have them linked in the description. And see you.